This is video 8.2.4, where we're going to learn how to write parabolic rules. So the goal here is to write a rule when given a table or a graph. So let's take a look at this first example. So we're going to write a rule to match this table. So here's what we want to remember. We want to remember that the intercepts, the zeros, are your friend. Because remember, when we solve for intercepts, and I'm talking about x-intercepts, Remember that those appear in the equation in factored form. So when I have the equation factored, I can see those intercepts. So what I need to do is figure out what the factor should be that would cause me to have these intercepts at negative 1 and 4. Well, negative 1, the factor would be x plus 1. Because if I plug in negative 1 for x, I would get 0 here, which would mean that a, an intercept would occur at negative 1. So that's one of my two factors. Now the second one, 4, 0, would occur if I was x minus 4. Because once again, if I plug in 4 for x, I would get 0 here, which would create this 0, or root, at 4. Now remember, this has to do with the x-intercepts, not the y-intercepts. So while you're looking for the zeros, you don't want to look at the y-intercept to help you write the factors. So, so far my rule is y equals x plus 1 times x minus 4. Now, I always want to check my rule and make sure it works for a third point. Usually if it works for three points on the table or the graph, then you probably have the right rule. So, let's take a look and let's plug in one more point. And this is where I like to use the y-intercept because operations with 0 are easy. So, now I'm going to actually plug in 0 for x. And I'm going to make sure that I get the output of negative 4 like I'm supposed to up there. Looks like I'm going to get 1 times negative 4, which is negative 4. So my rule is exactly what I've written here. Because three points work in it, my two x-intercepts and my y-intercept all work in that rule. So there's your rule. It's as easy as that. Now some of your teachers may want you to multiply that out. But we know that that's a simple process of creating a rectangle. Oops, wrong way around. Let's see, x plus 1 and x minus 4. And we'll plug in and we'll fill in our rectangle here. squared minus 3x minus 4. This is the same equation as the one in factored form, so either would be accepted, should be accepted on a test. So there's our rule for the first example. Let's take a look at the next example. Now we have a graph, okay, but we still want to look for the same exact things. Remember, we look for the two intercepts that would allow me to have my factors, and those are my x-intercepts. So once again, I look for my x-intercepts. Looks like I have an x-intercept here and here. So one is at 5 and the other is at negative 2. So my equation is x plus 2 and x minus 5. Because once again, I test if I plug into negative 2 for x, I should get 0. So, reminders, our factors always start with x, and then here is the term that would allow me to get a 0 at the x-intercept that I saw on the graph. So, in this case, x plus 2 would give me a 0 because negative 2 plus 2 makes 0. And the other one, 5, because 5 minus 5 is 0. So, here's my factored form. Now, I want to double check and make sure that it works for one more point. So I'm going to pick one point. It doesn't matter what point you pick. You could pick any point you see on the graph. So I could pick this point. Um, I could pick this point. Um, looks like the vertex might be hard to see, but I'm going to pick this point because it looks pretty exact, and I know it's an easy point. It's 0, negative 10. So once again, I'm going to use my y-intercept to check my answer. So when I plug in 0 for x, I should get negative 10 if my rule is correct. 
and it looks like I get 2 times negative 5, which is in fact negative 10. So my rule here in red is the correct rule for this equation. Once again, you could multiply that out. You could take a moment to try that here. If you multiply it out, you get x squared minus 3x minus 10. So we found the rule by finding the x-intercepts first, and then we have to check a point. So let's summarize that here. Steps to writing a parabolic rule. Step one is find the x-intercepts. Okay, And remember, the x-intercepts will help you find your factored form of your function. So x plus or minus something. Okay, Write the rule as a product. So a product is something times something. So this is our product right here that you see in black. So once we find those x-intercepts, we write the rule as a product to match the intercepts. And then we test another point. Okay, you always want to test another point. Always test points to make sure that you have the right answer. So I'm going to let you look at the next problem and try it on your own. So pause the video here, try this problem on your own, and when you're ready for the solution, restart the video. Okay, so you should have paused it and tried this problem on your own. Here's what you should have gotten. You should have started with a factored form, and the two factors came from these two intercepts. So one factor is x minus 1, because if I plug in 1, I should get 0. The next one is x minus 2, because of the other factor. If I plug in 2, I should get 0. The last thing you should have done is tested a point. Doesn't matter what point you test, and to prove that, I'll just plug in a random point like 3, 2. So if I plug in 3, I should get 2. So I'm looking for the answer of 2. It looks like 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, and it looks like my rule works because when I plugged in 3, I got an answer of 2. So my rule is x minus 1 times x minus 2, which we can multiply it out and we would get x squared minus 3x plus 2. Alright, so give these steps a shot on your worksheet and be sure to check your answers by plugging in those additional points.